Welcome back everyone with the Hello World guys. This is another episode of the OpenGL 3D render series and in this video we are going to uh, go ahead and create an object transformation system but before we get to that there are a couple of things that we want to do. The first is that uh, a single plane was kind of boring so I have created now a mesh which handles a cube. So this has a list of 8 vertices and then using those vertices it creates some indices here which represent the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 faces of the cube so this is basically like a basic cube of some sort it uh, every face you can see has two triangles each so 0 1 2 2 3 0 so we have got that basically and uh, you can kind of uh, you know copy this code if you want to if you want to just uh, create a one by one by one cube basic one so you know each one is 0 0.5 the vertex is located at so that creates a total size of exactly one unit so uh, you know the cube is one unit in each direction and of course you got the front back right left top and bottom face here arranged using the indices that we have got and when we create this mesh it creates a cube instead of just a plane and uh, you can see that uh, we are also making use of the z-axis here so it's basically like a plane but on three axes so now it's a cube so that would kind of make our 3d world a bit more 3d because you could move around like in a 3d world in the last video but we could only see a 2d plane so now we have made it so that we have got a 3d plane here a 3d cube here as well and uh, that is pretty much it we have basically i uh, modified my mesh here and uh, yeah that's all pretty awesome and uh, another thing you want to make sure is that it was giving us a warning about uh, conversion from you know unsigned integer to uh, float so just add an explicit cast here uh, when you are getting the size here uh, for the shader so that uh, it uh, does not give you any warnings and now our code should work and we should be able to move around the scene quite well however uh, there is a bit of a problem which is that uh, we cannot currently move our objects we can only move ourselves so we are now going to create a system for object moving as well now we do know that we require a system for moving our mesh here in different directions but uh, uh, we, we you might think that we should implement it inside of the mesh but that will actually be a bit impractical the reason is that the mesh class is supposed to contain all of the vertex and index data and if we implement the transform inside of the mesh then a mesh will actually be like an object in the scene and whenever we want to have like a thousand different meshes that are basically cubes then we'll have to create a thousand different instances of cubes which means each of those will have their separate vertices and indices even though they might be same or very close to each other and of course uh, that means that implementing that code within mesh won't be uh, really that uh, performant if you want to have multiple instances of the mesh and uh, that uh, is a bit of a problem and the second thing is that that uh, the mesh will only serve uh, in our purposes here as uh, just as a basic kind of uh, class for storing the mesh data and for actual having instances of the mesh we'll use uh, another class which we'll create just now called object so let's go ahead and uh, try to create an object class right now so what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and uh, go under our solution explorer and uh, in here we can just go ahead and say add and when we choose add here we can choose a new class and uh, the class we can just call object and uh, yeah let's just press ok and that is going to create our class for us. So in the object class we want to ensure that we have included mesh and in here for the public I'll create uh, uh, a couple of public methods and uh, yeah let's create a constructor for which is going to take a pointer to a mesh called mesh and in uh, in the actual class we are also going to have a constant pointer to a mesh called mesh and uh, by storing this as pointers we can basically use the same mesh in a bunch of different objects so we are going to now initialize our mesh member variable with the mesh argument and that is pretty much all the constructor is going to do and uh, now we can implement some more methods for actually drawing this object and stuff like that and um, we are also going to create a bunch of attributes for the position rotation and scale so let's create those first so we are going to create glm vec3 here called uh, well we are going to say position and uh, rotation and scale and these are the three ones and rotation will be implemented as the standard kind of uh, thing that we have got like x representing uh, pitch and uh, y representing yaw and z representing roll and in here I'm going to mm, basically take the values of that things like position rotation and scale in the uh, you know object constructor as well but we're going to use initializer list syntax and kind of have them as default values so that we can see them a bit easier uh, you know if we don't want to specify them we can uh, just leave them out so we are going to implement that and I'm going to implement this inside the cpp file and uh, we've got the old constructor here so let's remove that and uh, we are going to 
cut this line and paste it here and we are going to remove this old constructor and of course we are also going to make sure we initialize our position rotation and scale to the correct values as well position rotation and scale so once we have uh, initialized them to the correct value the next thing to do will be to actually create a function for drawing this object so for this we'll go ahead and uh, create a function called draw all that is going to take is a reference to a shader which means um, the shader won't be copied and it won't be allowed for us to pass in a null or like a non-existent shader we'll have to pass in a valid shader when taking a reference and uh, what we can do is uh, you can see kind of what we do here we just set the color and then draw the mesh and uh, let's leave the color out let's just uh, take the mesh to draw line here and uh, put this here and that is uh, yeah we of course we need to kind of this mesh is like a pointer right now as you can see so we need to use this syntax here so yeah that's pretty awesome but there is a fun thing that we can do here which is that we can also make the draw function take in a color to draw the mesh with um, which would allow us to kind of do that stuff a bit easier so that's going to be initialized by default to zero zero or black and uh, we are going to have basically very color variable here as well and if i remove that code and just paste it here and instead of sending it to a constant value set it to color that is pretty much all we should be needing to do now in here for actually using the object class what we can do is we can create an uh, object first of all of course uh, yeah well the problem is that for actually uh, using the uh, you know transformation we'll have to create another matrix so mm, like mm, you might have expected at this point we basically use matrices for handling all of this stuff so like we are setting the color here we'll also need to set a matrix which will uh, determine uh, like the actual how we need to transform and position the object and that matrix is traditionally called the model matrix so these are three matrices projection view and model so we are also going to take that uh, uniform and we are going to multiply the uh, projection matrix with the view matrix with the model matrix with the vector 4 and in here for testing right now what we are going to do is we are going to just set the value of the model to be basically and be the default matrix actually a GLM mat 4 which uh, will be an identity matrix and multiplying by an identity matrix has no effect so we should get what we were getting in the beginning of this video so that is pretty awesome so now we can actually use this class let's create an object called uh, well actually first we need to make sure we include the object header so we are going to do hashtag include object dot h and uh, now what we can do is uh, after after the let's actually do it after the camera and we're going to create an object called object and we are going to pass it a uh, the pointer to our mesh here and uh, that is pretty much it we'll leave the position everything at default right now and for actually drawing this we can go ahead and uh, uh, maybe in after we are done setting the view and projections of course we're going to call object dot draw with the shader uh, shader here and for the color let's just uh, we can of course leave it out and we are going to pass the uh, kind of uh, one for red and other 0 0.5 to kind of give a palish reddish kind of color so we are going to do that and that should basically cause us to get uh, the same results as we got uh, as we were getting earlier on so I'm going to run that and uh, what you should see is that everything works uh, yeah just just like that so we have got this here so now uh, with that done what we can do is we can go ahead and try to implement a method for positioning the cube correctly so you might want to uh, well uh, let's go ahead and first specify a position in the constructor we are going to do glm vec 3 and for the position we just say uh, 0 on the x or let's say negative 1 on the x and uh, 0 on the y or perhaps 1 on the y so that it's a bit higher as well and to the left a bit and uh, for the z let's just leave it as 0 and uh, if you run this now it should still nothing happen because we are passing the model matrix as uh, the default identity matrix and not as uh, what we are supposed to be passing it in according to our transformations so I'm going to close that down and uh, well let's go ahead and uh, yeah let's let's go ahead and implement a separate method for actually calculating that matrix we we'll call this one get transformation matrix and this will basically return the transformation matrix for us so now let's do that and uh, i'm going to create this implementation here and what we are going to do is when we are setting this model matrix we are going to call get transformation matrix for actually setting that uh, inside the red transformation matrix function we are going to create a glm matrix 4x4 four four matrix called t for transformation and set that to the default identity matrix then what we need to do is we need to actually calculate the transformation matrix here so let's just put some comment here to remind us so calculate the transformation matrix and after that we can just return the t that we have calculated currently it's just returning the identity matrix but now we are going to get to the actual calculation 
so in here what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to kind of uh, transform do everything correctly now it can be a bit uh, complicated to handle you know the uh, matrix uh, creation but uh, uh, there are a bunch of kind of different matrices that you can do here and you can study the math if you really want to but OpenGL has some really nice functions like transpose translate sorry not transpose for which you will need to include this uh, glm slash x extension slash matrix transform uh, header and the uh, glm translate takes a uh, transformation matrix that like the default starting transformation matrix and then we can translate it by a specific position and similarly for scale these two are very simple uh, to do in uh, using the glm library now rotation is a bit more complicated though before we get to rotations there are a couple of things that you want to note firstly uh, when we are defining the scale we are going to pass one as the default value on the when we just pass one here or uh, you, you know actually we need to use the constructor here now so we are going to use the glm constructor here uh, glm by 3 the reason we need to do that is because we want it to kind of uh, in the scale to be always be 1 by default not 0 or else our object won't be visible and uh, yeah let's just uh, do that and yeah it, sh it that should work so we are going to make sure that we set the scale to zero now the other thing that you do want to note is that uh, once we are when we are doing this uh, we want to make sure that you can see we are translating it a bit and uh, that was uh, uh, that's okay and we are also scaling it now uh, you might uh, not understand this right now but uh, the order of these matters so uh, if you were to move the scale up it would actually get a bit wrong and it would uh, uh, you know kind of scale our transform uh, translations as well generally the order f uh, for transformation matrix generation should be that we should scale then we should rotate then we should translate but the reason we would scale after is because matrix multiplication with vectors or anything occurs from right to left so it should be written uh, uh, you know read like this so first scale on the right and then uh, then the rotation and then the translation so in code we will first actually do translation then rotation and then scale now in here we want to do rotations now OpenGL has a GLM rotate function but that function requires us to provide it an axis about which we want to rotate but we have got Euler angles and we rotate about uh, you know all three axes like separately and you might just uh, put all three axes separately there but that is a bit of a problem because they're putting three axes like uh, separately and you know uh, when we are actually rotating will cause a bit of a problem the reason for that is that uh, uh, well there are a bunch of problems that can be caused by this and uh, like uh, some rotational problems like gimbal lock and stuff and uh, that uh, that you can go and study the mathematics if you want and that is not what we want so if we actually want to you know kind of uh, do this in a right manner what we'll have to do is we'll have to use quaternions now quaternions are not really that user friendly uh, you know if you want to specify rotation from an artist point of view so we'll use Euler angles here for defining here but here what we'll do is we'll convert the quaternion uh, we'll convert the Euler angles to quaternions then we'll take that quaternion and multiply it by the transformation matrix by first converting the quaternion to a matrix and uh, that is what that is going to do is that is going to allow us to uh, easily you know uh, rotate our object without much problem so in order to do rotation I'll just say T is equal to GLM colon colon uh, actually not uh, GLM colon colon first we'll multiply T with the GLM mat forecast what that will do is it will convert the quaternion to a matrix that we can multiply and for that we need to make sure we include the quaternion dot HPP file actually here and uh, we'll just con uh, we'll just have GLM colon colon quaternion here to actually get the quaternion and in here we'll uh, we'll you can see there are a bunch of different uh, uh, constructors here one that takes an Euler angles in radians we don't have it in radians we have it in degrees but we'll just convert the ho whole uh, vector to radians which you can do directly so yeah this is a templated method so that's pretty easy to do in here we can just pass the rotation here as the uh, what we want to convert to the radians and uh, that is all we need to do and uh, you might say we can use t multiply equal this but the, as I said the order matters so we want to make sure that it takes place in the correct order so we don't get any problems that is uh, pretty awesome I guess and uh, that is going to generate our transformation matrix and it is going to work correctly uh, I'm going to zoom in a bit by the way so you can kind of see this better and uh, yeah that is pretty much all we need to do so now what we can do is we can go under 3D renderer and in here we are going to uh, run this to see whether our scare whatever we had is moved or not so you can see it's uh, running and uh, once it actually manages to get that right so 
you know it's kind of loading and yeah you can see that our cube is moved up and also to the left a bit and we can still kind of move around it but it has been translated and if you want to rotate the cube that's also possible to do we can just uh, set the object uh, you know the y value to zero uh, i'm going to set it to zero so that it's in the center and then i'm going to add rotation to it so we are going to make a uh, for example we are going to make it uh, 45 degrees on each axis and remember this is in degrees we'll convert it to radians in the transformation function so let's go ahead and run that and uh, hopefully this will work so you can see that it's running and uh, yeah it it gets that done correctly and we do get a rotated cube it's a bit hard to see the details without uh, uh, lighting and shading but you can kind of still make it out the shape of the cube so that's all pretty awesome and the next thing we want to do is we want to test scaling so we are going to create a vector for scaling let's say 2 on the x and uh, 0 0.5 on the y and uh, 2 on the z just so you can see the each x is better i'm going to remove the rotation for now and uh, let's make the z1 so we z on z axis is going to stay as it is on y is going to be kind of squished down half size and on x is going to be elongated twice so let's go ahead and press that out and what you should be able to see is that it does work so yeah guys this is pretty much it for this video in this video we learned how to create like a transformation matrix and in the next one we are going to continue by creating a uh, like a system for maybe loading the meshes from file or or perhaps uh, shading and lighting because currently it looks kind of boring so that's pretty much it for this video make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next one and bye